All right, guys, welcome back. We're trying to get a clear connection. Fingers crossed that this might help out and we'll see what we can do. Come on back, guys. We're just getting started. We have a lot of great conversation to come. Hey, Alex. Hey, Andre. Janelle should be here any second. Just trying to get a better connection. Live TV, TV in the face of digital is uh, something we're all trying to figure out a little bit better. All right, I'm keeping my eye out for Janelle. Yes, we're trying to get clear, guys. Fingers crossed. She will be right back. Let me keep my eye on it. Okay. Grabbing her right now, guys. Hang tight. Hey, Gio. Hi. Hi. Okay, it's clear. I took it off. Why? That's the so fingers crossed. Okay, we'll see what happens. Okay. Good. We're back. We're back, everybody. So let's. Keep going from where we left off. So that's amazing. You were in Hawaii and then you moved to Hollywood at about 14, right? Yeah. And I know you've talked about how that was a difficult transition, both personally, but also professionally for you. So what was it like trying to find your place in this whole new world coming from Hawaii to Hollywood? Yeah. So growing up in Hawaii, I am biracial, but most people in Hawaii are. It's very much a, a melting pot. So you see self-represented all the time, you know, doing TV there, doing commercials, doing any play or musical, you are always seeing people who look like you up on the stage because everybody else is also a melting pot there, right? So moving to LA at 14, I realized that I was considered different here. And that was so confusing to me because I'm like, wait, why, why is it different if I look any different? Like, why am I not considered the all-American girl or why Am I being told that they just can't fit me into this family because I'm not quite Asian enough or I'm not quite Caucasian enough? So that was definitely like a culture shock for sure. Um, I feel very lucky that I think that's definitely changed. Um, and here in 2020, I think representation is absolutely amazing now. Um, and so I feel very grateful. But first moving here at 14, yeah, it was definitely like a shock. How did you push through feeling like you didn't belong, right? That's what, when people are coming to you saying, oh, you didn't get the part, it's not because of your talent, or singing, you know, an octave, you can't sing. It was literally, oh, it just, you don't look like what we're looking for. How did you get through that? I mean, it was definitely tough. There were definitely times where I was like, maybe, what, maybe I made a um, bad call here. But I'm really lucky that my parents were super, super supportive literally moved me here and when I was here. So um, they basically like, don't give up. Like you're talented. If this is your dream, you have to persevere. Um, and I had great acting at the same thing and just kind of kept talk when I was down. And I just didn't give up. I was like, no, this is what I've wanted since I was five. I refuse to give up. Obviously sometimes that is way easier said than done. There's been many times I've cried not getting the part that I really wanted. But then you just have to say, this is what I want. I'm committed to doing everything that I can to stick it out. And um, yeah, I just didn't take no for an answer. And we have a lot of Bratz fans I see commenting. And that was the first time where you really saw yourself on a breakdown, which for those who don't know, that's kind of the description of the character. And it's where you saw yourself represented, right? Yeah. It was so exciting. It was the first breakdown. I was 18 years old, 17, 18. I was 18 years old and I saw a breakdown specifically for half Chinese, half Caucasian. And I was like, how? How is, is what I am actually what is being asked for at this time? I've never seen that. And so it was so exciting. I was like, I, this is my role. It has to be my role. It just feels like it. Um, and I auditioned for it and I'll never forget the feeling when I found out I got it. And I mean, it really just like started my career. It was the first movie I ever worked on. It was my first leading film or sorry, first leading role in anything. I learned so much being on set. I made friends for life. Um, I just did a film that's coming out, uh, June 5th with the same director as Brat. So 12 years later. On my 30th birthday, I get a call from him saying, do you want to work together? And it just felt so serendipitous. But that movie meant so much to me and to my career. And yeah, it's nice to see some Bratz fans. That's awesome. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's so cool. I love that. What a great story. What a nice memory to have such a, a big kickoff to your career in a major way, right? Yeah. That's awesome. And now, can you see me? I think I lost you for a second. Oh, can you see me? I can see you. It's fuzzy again. No. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Usually my Wi-Fi is great, but today it must be acting up. That's so, so you're on, you're not on Wi-Fi right now, right? No, because I think my Wi-Fi is the issue. Do you want me to try to get back on Wi-Fi? Yeah, maybe try to get back on real quick. Let's see if that will be a little better. Hang on, Wi-Fi. How's that? We're trying to get a better connection, guys. Stay tuned. Sorry, oh, guys. Oh, it's getting better. Is Wi-Fi connected? Yeah. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay. Just in time for Pretty Little Liars discussions. Yeah. So... You, I mean, obviously, everybody loves this show so much. PLL means so much to so many, and you got to play the fantastic role of Mona. So how did the opportunity come up to join the show, and what was that audition like for you? Yeah, so actually, I auditioned at first to play Spencer, um, and oh. script, I loved it. Again, it have to be a part of the project. It happens to an time, but when you get it, it almost hurts when you get that feeling, I must be part of it. And PLL was one of them. But I auditioned for Spencer, I came in for producers a couple times, and then I was told it wasn't going in my direction. Um, and I was so bummed out. But then a couple months later, they circled back and said they wanted to see me for Mona. Um, and uh, I, so I went in for to read for Marlene and the producers, and I got it from there. And it was so exciting. I hadn't read the books at the so I didn't know where they were going with the character. I just thought, you know, it was like Hannah's best friend be in there every now and then is like popular mean girl. And that was enough for me. Then you know, the turn that my character took was like every actor's, they wrote me my character with so much to do and so much to play with, so many layers that it was just like a dream role. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. And did you have any idea that the show was going to be such a massive success? Like when you walked in the first day, were you like, all right, it's a job. Let's see where it goes. Or did you just kind of feel it? You know, I kind of felt it when I read the script, which is why I had that intense feeling of like, I really want to be a part of this. It just was such an amazing story. Um, and obviously, you hope. like you go, you do your pilot, you hope it gets picked up. The, the, it gets picked up and then you hope it does well. So I don't think any of us could have imagined that it would have turned into what it turned into, but we're definitely great. And was there a particular moment for you where you realized, okay, this show has caught on, like it's, it's got massive worldwide appeal. What, what was that moment for you? You know, it was actually season one is when Twitter started to become more of a thing. And I think our show, one of the first shows to start doing like live tweeting where we could interact with the fan. And I want Twitter, I Instagram, but the show is the reason why I ended up getting it because they were like, you know, a lot of people are talking about it on social media. We think it could be really great to like have you guys chat, you know, one with the fans. So I said, sure, I'll have a Twitter and I'll come live tweet. And that was the first time I really realized like how strong our fan base is. And you see the tweets and you chat. I mean, our PLL fandom is so incredible, even to this day. Our show's not even on the air anymore, and our face is so incredible. Yeah, for sure. I know they're all commenting how much they love it. And actually, I think I saw you post HBO Max now. You can watch it, right? Yeah, so HBO Max just launched, and all of PLL is on there, so you can binge watch it. I might have to do it as well. I haven't watched it since we were on the air, and I feel like it's going to be painful to like watch me like you know when you <laughs> oh gosh I look like such a baby and I improved so much throughout the year but I think it's time to like <laughs> yeah it's a good quarantine activity for sure and Janelle this show resonates with so many people in such a big way what do you think it is about PLL that makes people feel so connected and, and it, that creates such fandom around it yeah I think it's, I think it's the pretty little liar you know strong women Long no matter what, no matter how hard all days, if there were people, <laughs> no matter how hard days break them apart, they they stay together and no matter what. And that friendship is so beautiful, so strong. 
I mean, they're overcoming so much. They're literally overcoming bullying. I've seen a lot of people me so much overcome bullying, and that makes me so happy. You know that they took the rank. Oh, um, and everybody also loves a good like who done it soapy, sexy drama. I love. Them. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it just it connects with people in ways that so many other shows have fans, obviously, but it's not as a much of a passionate relationship. So I love seeing even people writing now how much the show means to them. It's it's really really cool, and you got to play the villain who you played flawlessly for Thank quite you. some time, and um, she had a lot of great moments. So to you, what were some of your favorite Mona moments? Oh, wow. My favorite Mona moment. Oh, I have two. My first favorite, I, by the way, because I just saw a comment. Saying, oh. What's that? Can you still see me okay, or is it cutting out? It's cutting out a little bit, yeah, but. I'm so sorry, you guys. Uh, I don't know what... do you, Maybe, do you want to try one other area of your house? I'm right, yeah, okay. Let me try one more thing. Okay. So I'm right next to the like extender, but maybe I need to go be in like literally next to the box. Yeah, let's I see. Promise that my house is clean up here, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, How it's your first this? IG live. Is this better? I think so. Yeah, let's let's give it a go. Okay, because I'm next to the uh, the modem now. Um, sorry, my dog is wants to say hello. Oh my God, your dog is so cute. Okay, is it okay now, Tommy? Yeah, it's good now. And I'm gonna make sure my connection's good too. Mine's Can you good. guys see okay? I'm sorry. Hello. You're, we, it's, at least we can hear you good. It sounds better, I think. Okay, everyone says it sounds better. So that's good. Better? Yeah, I think it's better. Okay. Um, what was your So your favorite Mona moments. Yeah, okay, so I have two. Uh, the first one is the Mona A reveal, um, because it's the first time that you see, you know, A with a face. And I just remember how terrified I was to do that scene. I was just like, this is such a big moment, and I'm scared that I'm going to, like, blow it, you know? So that forever will be, like, one of my favorite moments, just because we did it, and it was so big for me. Um, Okay, looks like people can hear and see, so that's good. Okay, um, and then my second favorite Mona moment is pretty much all my stuff in Radley Sanitarium. I loved Crazy Mona. I, it was so much fun to play, and okay. I never played a role like that before, and I just got to like be insane, and that was my job. And like the therapy of just going to set and then like screaming at Caleb, I felt great that day afterwards. I was like, whoa, I feel like a superhero. I can do anything. <laughs> That's something we all need, right? <laughs> yeah, everybody just needs to scream sometimes. You let out so much, you know? And a lot of people are wondering, were you nervous during that big reveal of, of oh A? My, yeah, I was terrified. I was terrified when Marlene called me and said, hey, you're going to be A. And I was like, are you sure? Do you trust me with this? I mean, <laughs> that's such a big moment. That was such a secret that was kept for so long. And now I'm like, what if I don't deliver? What if I'm not a good enough bad guy and people don't like that, you know? So I was so terrified. And also that scene was at the end of a 19 hour day. It was the last scene that we were shooting of season two. And so Troy and I were like exhausted. We were so exhausted, but it, we kind of got like slap happy at that point. Um, but again, those things are kind of like, that's what kind of keeps the memory being so great is like those crazy moments, you know? And so much happened in that show so fast. I feel like you guys had some of the hardest jobs because the plot line was so everywhere, right? Like there were twists and turns and so much to keep track of. So for you, was it difficult like memorizing all of that all the time and bringing different emotions in one episode in total different extremes of the emotional cycle? <laughs> You know, the only time it was kind of difficult is like when we were doing two scenes at once. Um, sometimes they do that for budgetary reasons. And so then you're like, okay, wait, this scene, what episode is it in? What has happened just now that I'm reacting to? Because you're right, like at the drop of a hat, especially Mona, her emotions are so different from moment to moment. Um, so yeah, that definitely was a struggle at times. The, the craziest thing to me is when somebody says like, 
what's your favorite episode or what's your favorite line? Because I'm like, I, so much has happened. We've said so much through seven seasons that I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's a lot to keep track of. Yeah. And a lot of people are asking, are you, how are you like your character and how are you different? I think the differences are obvious, but. <laughs> oh my goodness, yeah. No, it's always great when somebody meets me in person and they're like, you're actually nice. And I'm like, well, good, because Mona was crazy. <laughs> um, I think the only thing that I, I've said this in interviews before, but I think the only thing that I relate to with Mona is kind of the nerdy Mona. Uh, being bullied in school, the feeling of not feeling uh, like you're in, you know, in, in the in crowd. I definitely, definitely relate to that. Even now, there are moments where I'm like, I'm such a nerd. I don't fit in with the cool people. But you know what? Like, that's what makes me special. That's what made Mona special. In her case, that's what made her snap. I don't think I have that gene, which is very good. Um, but I think that's the only thing that I relate to. Like when I watch Nerdy Mona, I'm like, oh, me in middle school. Yeah, yeah, I love <laughs> that. And then when you, we have a lot of questions about the perfectionist. So did yeah. you feel like there was a different story of Mona's to tell? Were you excited when that opportunity came up? Yeah, great question. I actually was really, I was excited when Marlene asked me if I wanted to do the spinoff, but I was also kind of nervous because I was like, you know, to play Mona, I have a very clear job. I'm coming in every few episodes, every few scenes, and I'm either antagonizing or I'm saying something snarky and funny. And she's just that kind of fun side character. And I said, but can I be, how do we make Mona that person that you see every day, that hero? Like, how do we humanize her so that she's still Mona, but you're following her everyday life? Um, and I think the writers did such a great job of writing for her. And you see a more grown up Mona um, and you kind of go along with her on her life. And that was really fun to play because I got to kind of mature her, um, yeah. but still show moments of Mona mania. Well, people really love seeing that. And it's evident from the comments or they wish there was more of it because they so I enjoyed her story. That. Me too, me too. But I feel very grateful that we at least got a season. And the cast is so wonderful and so great, so. And a lot of people, like you touched on this earlier, they credit the show as being their escape, right? From maybe feeling like they're the other at school to being bullied. It was a place that they can go and feel safe and enjoy a great form of entertainment. And it means so much to so many. So for a lot of your younger fans who are writing in right now, talking about that, what advice do you have about getting through to the other side and then coming out of all of that messy bullying that might be happening? Yeah, of course. I mean, I know how hard it is. I think we all have had moments where we feel like pressured to be some somebody that we're not in order to fit in. But I say to that, I've found, at least for me, the thing that makes me happiest is, you know, being completely in love with who I am. Um, completely just being me unapologetically, um, taking comfort in that and taking ownership in that. Because I think the things that make us different are the things that make us the most special. Um, so I think if you can, you know, whatever that means for you, whether it's you have great parents you can talk to or great friends that make you feel beautiful or, you know, listening to music or dancing in a room or even just screaming at the top of your lungs, whatever you can do to make yourself feel like I am me and that is enough, do that. I love that. And what do you hope that people take away from Pretty Little Liars? I hope they take away how beautiful it is to have meaningful friendships, you know, to have each other's backs no matter what. I mean, to have like a tribe with you is really wonderful when you're feeling low to have somebody pull you up is really special um yeah and also what i said like being strong not letting anybody tear you down not letting anybody make you feel smaller than you are and i love that you put out so many messages that matter and a lot of your fans relate to you because you put out messages about self-love and you know you've talked about growing up in the business how it was often hard sometimes to really accept you for who you were you know physically because people are always voicing an opinion or picking picking apart at something and I get it I've been, you know in the industry I've gotten it too and it's mm -hmm. it's something that is hard enough dealing with on your own let alone getting a million opinions thrown your way on and mm -hmm. I love that you're such a 
preacher and advocate for finding your beauty and owning it and, and liking yourself. And I know you said it's a journey you're on continually as well, and we all are, right? But why, yeah. why does this message matter, maybe more than ever in 2020? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it took a while. Like, there were times where I will read comments and somebody will specifically say something that touches upon a insecure, an insecurity that I have. And so then I just had to learn through therapy and years and time that I'm actually reacting to my own insecurity, not somebody else's, because I don't know this person. So why should it matter what they have to say, right? What matters is how I feel about myself. And so while working on myself and the way that I view myself has changed that so much, and I'm so much happier every day. And I just think like, that's something that Again, like, like you said, like, I love to say that message because it's something that's helped me so much in my own happiness. And especially right now with all this uncertainty and anxiety, it is so easy to spin off. And I've, I've had days like that too, of just, well, what if this and what if that? And, but the reality is like, all we can control is ourselves and how we respond to the situation. And so I think if we can get to the point where we can change the narrative, like, okay, I'm just spinning out of control. I'm just feeling really vulnerable right now. I'm feeling scared, but I've got me. I'm okay. I'm safe. Everything is going to be okay. It just changes everything for yourself. 100%. And I think realizing, too, what we might perceive as an imperfection is actually probably one of the most beautiful parts about ourselves, right? Absolutely, yes. Yeah, that's so great. I love that message, and I love that you're putting that out there. It's so important. (laughs) I love it, love it, love it. Um, now let's talk about the reunion happening virtually. Yes. Because people are very excited. For everyone that doesn't know, the cast of The Perfectionist is reuniting on June 6th. So tell us about this event. What can people expect? How can people get involved? And I don't know if you know, but I actually just got asked to moderate that. So I'll see I you there do. too. I do. I'm so excited. That's going to be so fun. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, we, so we did this for Pretty Little Liars. Um, time I don't I don't have a concept of time anymore so maybe a week ago maybe two weeks ago but we did it for cast for good and you know it was so great to do that and and we also it was for a great cause and we raised a lot of money for feeding America which is wonderful so cast for good asked us if we would do another one with pretty little liars the perfectionists um, this time for smile train and we're so excited and I haven't seen some of my cast members I mean, in probably a year or so. So it's going to be really great to see their faces. And we just really love chatting with fans. Um, We also do this thing on Looped where we can chat with our fans one-on-one. And that's really, really great because, you know, we are not always offered that opportunity. Um, And while we're in the digital age right now, it's such a great time to connect um, from wherever we are and just kind of uplift each other you know we're all in this together and this is crazy so it's wonderful to be able to kind of have like a joyous reunion and an occasion where we can chat with people all the while raising money for smile train um which is such a great um cause so um i've posted about it um people can go to my last instagram it's got the website all the information tickets are on sale now and we go live on june 6th Amazing. Guys, you don't want to miss this. It's really, really fun. I love that you all are doing it. Like you said, it's a great cause. And it's an opportunity to see you guys all together. And guys, you can write in and ask your own questions yeah. during the event. Yeah, we'll answer lots of questions. Um, and also just kind of like give you some fun behind the scenes, which everybody loves. You know, like I love hearing behind the scenes stuff that's happening with like my favorite shows. So that's we're super excited. I love that. And let's talk Mighty Oak Movie, which looks very exciting. So for everyone that doesn't know, what is that about? Where can people watch it? Fill us in. Yeah, so Paramount just bought our film Mighty Oak. Um, We're so excited. We feel very grateful. It was just a tiny little indie that we did um, last February. Um, Was it the February before that? I don't know. But anyway, um, we're very happy that they bought it. So June 5th, it's going to be out in um yay people are excited thank you um june 5th is going to be out in um drive-in theaters across the country so in the states uh, first um so if you're itching to get out of the house please find out if it's playing near you bring your family and just get out there um then after that it'll be expanding to movie theaters when they start to reopen and then straight to streaming so everybody will get to see it at some point 
Um, and basically it's this beautiful little film that has a lot of heart. Um, it's about loss and finding love again after loss and hope and broken people coming together to form a family and you will cry, but I promise you like the ending is so uplifting and I'm so grateful that this movie's coming out right now, which sounds crazy. Um, but I think it's an uplifting movie that we all need right now with such a beautiful message, you know, that no matter what, no matter how bad things can be you can always find beauty in it. And this movie is certainly, you know, it shows that message so much. And there's also great music in it too, which I feel like everybody loves a good musical movie, especially right now. If you're looking for a great escape family film with lots of laughs, lots of tears and great music, Mighty Oak is the way to go. Yeah, I'm not sure if everybody realizes, people know you sing, but you, you were on Broadway, you've done tours, right? Yeah, yeah, when I was a little girl, I started out on Broadway and I still sing every now and then. I will say, just because I know people are asking, I don't sing in this film, um, but there is lots of music in this film. And it was all written by our little star, Tommy Reagan, um, who starred on Broadway when he was a kid. And he wrote all of the music and plays guitar and sings and he is, a full-on prodigy. So, I mean, go see that film because he is a star in the making. Well, people are very, very excited for it. I'm going to take a couple more questions. I saw one pass by asking if you would ever play Mona again. I would love to play Mona again. If they ever wanted to do a movie or like a 10 year later reunion or something, I would be down because I honestly, I don't know how I got so lucky to play a role that I loved so much. Um, and I don't know if we'll ever be that lucky again. Like she was the best role I've ever played. I hope I get lucky to play another role that I loved as much as Mona. So yes, my answer is yes. And a lot of people were wondering some of your funniest memories from the set of PLL. Ooh, funniest memories. Um, you know, it's hard to pick just one, but definitely like the night shoots, um, because everybody gets slap happy. Everybody's exhausted, <laughs> you're trying to keep yourself up. You're probably gonna drink coffee or like an energy drink. 3 a.m. rolls around and everybody's just giddy. And so sitting backstage trying to keep each other awake, like the things that we've said and the stories we've told and like the, the amount of giggling for no reason, like priceless memories. That's so much fun. And this is a fun question. If you could play any other character, who would it be? Oh, okay, so I've answered this one before. I like this question. I said Allison, and the reason why is because <laughs> apparently I'm just drawn to those complicated characters. <laughs> I think they're more fun to play when you have so much to like play with, you know, so many layers. And I just thought, Allison, she, what a delicious character to play with. So I would have loved to play her. That is a fun question. And yeah, that, I could see that. You like these really interesting, complex <laughs> roles. It's more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's so much fun. You've done so much in, in what I think is such a short period of time. What are some of the things that excite you when you think about the future? Wow. Um, well, I would love to do things I haven't done before. Um, so that would include comedy. I haven't done really a lot of comedy. Uh, Mighty Oak has some comedy in it, but I think it'd be really fun to like be on a show for a while that is comedic. I think that would be awesome. I would love to do a musical film. I mean, this, this movie has music in it, but I would love to do a true musical film. We burst into song and sing what we're feeling. That would be a dream or a TV show. Um, and I would actually really like to go back to Broadway now that I'm an adult. I think that would, those are, those are my dreams. That's awesome. Come to New York. That would be so fun. I would love to come to New York. <laughs> I miss it. Oh, Broadway. Oh, that's so fun. I know. I hope they get back. I mean, I don't know. No, when, but... no. We'll get back. It might take a little while, but we'll get back there. It will happen. And a lot of people are asking how quarantine life is going for you and any advice to just stay happy and healthy. You know, it changes week to week, as I'm sure it does with everybody. There are good weeks, there are bad weeks. When I have bad weeks, I just try to like get myself into something that I haven't done before. So on a bad week, I got myself into cross stitching and that really was great because it's just like a fun, creative way to zone in and zone out. You have to focus, but that's all you can focus on. So it's like uh, almost like a mindless thing. Um, recently, I got into playing Animal Crossing because I needed something new to obsess about or obsessing about new shows. So it changes week to week, but I think it's just like, giving yourself the best day possible, because what else are you supposed to do? I mean, 
you could sit there and just be like, this sucks. And trust me, there are days I do that. But for the most part, I'm just like, well, what can I do to give myself a good day? Because we're going to have a lot of them. Yeah, absolutely. And and how is marriage going and your relationship? A lot of it's questions great. about that. Yeah, he's the best. I honestly, I, I've been in a lot of relationships in my 20s trying to figure it out because that's what you do right you got to kiss too. a lot of frogs so you find your prince right exactly um but a I lot don't of frogs <laughs> right <laughs> exactly i don't regret any of it because it taught me what i have to offer and what i deserve and ultimately what i need like what's best for me and then what kind of person is ultimately going to be my life partner so when i met him I mean, pretty much immediately, we were both just like you. We got engaged a year later. We got married two years later. Um, and it's wonderful. So he's actually an essential worker. He is a chemical engineer, and he works in a water plant where they, like, clean water for hospitals and stuff. So he is gone most of the day, and I'm quarantined by myself with my dog. So when he comes home, even though he's, like, exhausted, I'm just, like, crazy. I'm like, talk to me. Play with me. Tell me you love me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need a human interaction. <laughs> exactly. But yeah, he's the best. He really is. Your wedding looked beautiful in Hawaii, by the way. Oh, thank you. It was wonderful. Like, it literally started raining during our vows, and it was a magical moment. Oh, my gosh. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And, Janelle, lastly, I want to finish up. You know, you've learned so much in your life. You've gone through ups and downs, and you've had so much success, and you really lived quite a life so far. Um, and with that comes a lot of life lessons. So what's one of the biggest life lessons you've learned that perhaps maybe you wish you knew a little earlier in life? Stop trying to control everything. Stop trying to predict. Life is going to be so unexpected. There's no way that you could possibly know what tomorrow brings. So stop stressing about it. Again, easier said than done. I still have bad days, but it's the one life lesson that I'm still really trying to like teach myself every day. Um, all you can do is just give yourself the best day possible. And that includes just learning that you don't have control of everything. You have control over the way you respond to it. That's all. And I've been so much happier. And I really wish I had told myself that when I was in my early, my early 20s. <laughs> Would have saved me myself too, a lot of too. anxiety, right? <laughs> I know, I know, but that's great advice. And it's something that it's never too late to learn. And I hope that helps many people. That's something I, I also always have to remind myself. So it's, it's important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Janelle, it was so nice talking to you. Sorry about the little technical glitches No, I'm had sorry. Earlier. I think it was on my end, but I'm glad we figured it out. And thank you so much for having me. It was such a pleasure. Stay safe, stay healthy. We will be together again for the reunion on June yes. 6th, you guys. Go to her profile and check her Instagram posts to hear everything about the Perfectionist Reunion. We'll see you then, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye, Tommy. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>